Thank you for tuning in to Island Focus and joining me in the conversation with Pauline Warsham. So nice to see you again. Same here, Lila. You wear a lot of different hats. Yes, I do. And today we're talking about the Mauna Loa Gardens Foundation. Yes, that's correct. You know, about 20 years ago, I started my own business and um, I've been fortunate over the years to have some very wonderful clients. And uh, today I'd like to share uh, information about Moana Little Gardens Foundation. You know, we've been around for 47 years, but um, there isn't a whole lot of awareness of what we do in the community. And what we do, I think, is so important for everybody to know about. Specifically, what do, what is the focus of the foundation? Well, we were founded in 1970 by uh, two of the uh, granddaughters of Samuel Mills Damon. And at the time, they founded Moana Lua Gardens Foundation to fight the H3 from going through Moana Lua Valley. Because as you know, the um, estate of Samuel Mills Damon owned the valley. They, um, Samuel Mills inherited it from Princess Bernice Pauhe Bishop. And he kept the gardens open for the public and also helped preserve Kamananui, or as we know it today, Moana Lua Valley. So when the H3 was going to be constructed, the first route was through Moana Lua Valley. And because the two sisters, um, Frances Patches Damon Holt and her sister, Harriet Haku Damon Baldwin, felt it was important to preserve this, these legacy lands where there are cultural sites and historic sites, they founded Moana Lua Gardens Foundation. You know what I, I love so much about uh, being in Hawaii and also the work that you're doing um, is that there's a recognition of culture and history as the contemporary needs, I guess, or the interests of society evolve. And in part, that's what the foundation does, right? Exactly. And as you know, the two sisters were successful because uh, the H3 ultimately went through Halava Valley. And after that experience, the two sisters felt it was very important to continue this awareness, community awareness of teaching people how to protect and preserve our Aina. And we were the pioneers actually in environmental education. So from that start, we segued into uh, teaching our keiki because it was felt that they're going to be our future leaders, our future generation. It was so important for the keiki to know how to become good stewards of these lands, which as you know, are disappearing. And the whole, this effort culminated in a special project. Our Partners in Education program was the first thing that we started. And it was a, a program that um, took place in 41, um, public schools here on Oahu and Molokai. Wow. So that was our first project to develop a formal environmental education program. But then seven years after that, or eight years after that, we started our cultural programming, which eventually became our annual Prince Laut Hula Festival. Which just completed this year already. <laughs> right, actually we celebrated our 40th anniversary wow. at a new location at Iolani Palace, but we kept the cultural connection. Um, and the Prince La Hula Festival really originated in Moana Lua. And the reason for that was that after the community was divided over the H3 controversy, the estate and the sisters felt we needed a way to unite the community. So the Prince La Hula Festival was founded. And it has become, over the years, the largest non-competitive hula exhibition in the state, and we like to say in the entire world. Well, it's probably definitely true, because there's no other place, as we know from Aloha Stadium, that has the aloha that we have. Exactly, yeah. and it's two days of wonderful hula, and a signature event now in the city. So we're really proud of um, where we've taken the Prince Laut Hula Festival. Thank you so much for sharing all that information with us, and we'll look forward to hearing from you in other times about your projects. Thank well, you thank you, Lila. It's so nice to see you again. Yeah. We've been chatting here at Aloha Stadium with Pauline Warsham and the Mauna Loa Gardens Foundation. Thank you for joining us, and once again.